welcome students in this session we will continue chapter 6 life processes in this session we will study about heterotrophic mode of nutrition heterotrophic mode of nutrition heteros means others trophy means nutrition heterotrophic nutrition is that mode of nutrition in which an organism cannot make or synthesize its own food from simple inorganic material like carbon dioxide and water and depends on other organisms for its food those organisms which cannot make their own food from inorganic substances like carbon dioxide and water and depends on other organisms for their food are called as heterotrophs examples are all animals man dog cat lion most bacteria and fungi heterotrophic nutrition are also broadly divided as herbivores carnivores omnivores herbivores are those organisms that only depend upon green plants carnivores are those type of animals or those type of organisms that depend upon flesh omnivores are those type of organisms that depend on both uh, uh, plant and flesh types of heterotrophic nutrition heterotrophic mode of nutrition is of three types saprotrophic nutrition parasitic nutrition holozoic nutrition saprotrophic nutrition saprotrophic nutrition is that nutrition in which an organism obtains its food from decaying organic matter of dead plants dead animals and rotten breads etc the organisms having saprotrophic mode of nutrition are called as saprophytes saprophytes are the organisms which obtain food from dead plants like rotten leaves dead and decaying animal bodies and other decaying organic matter example fungi which can be seen on bread molds mushrooms and many bacteria this is a bread mold you can uh, get you can be seeing this type of molds when you keep the bread in moist and warm place for a longer amount of time and mushrooms you can you can see this mushroom during the moist rainy season they are growing on the twigs around your house other examples of saprophytes are lactobacillus which i know you all know it is found in curd so they are mainly found in many dairy products like the cheese paneer etc parasitic nutrition parasitic nutrition is that nutrition in which an organism derive its food from body of another living organism without killing it it always harms the other organism a parasite is an organism it can be the plant or animal which feed on other living organism and those other living organisms are called as hosts example animals like plasmodium and roundworms example of plants are cascata it is also popularly called as amarbel other than that there are many fungi and bacteria which are parasitic in nature cascata this is a uh, stem parasite it is yellow in color it does not have any photosynthesis material inside it it has got suckers that enter into the host plant and then it takes away nutrition from both the xylem and the phloem that is it takes water also and it also takes the food that is prepared by the plant and therefore it is also called as total parasite other examples are and animals are round worm then there is a bacteria that is called as fibria cholerae then there is a protozoa that is called as plasmodium they all are parasites in nature and they harm us in one or the other way vibrio cholerae got cholerae because of which we get diseases like diarrhea plasmodium they cause malaria so this is found in mainly the female anopheles mosquitoes and when the such female anopheles mosquitoes in their saliva there is plasmodium and it bites a person it will give pass on the plasmodium to the person and they will attack the rbc of the red blood cells of the person this is a round worm which lives in the intestine part of human being the next nutrition is called as holozoic nutrition the holozoic nutrition is that nutrition in which an organism takes the complex organic food material into its body by the process of ingestion the ingested food is digested and then absorbed into the body cells of the organism for example 
human beings, and most of the animals. This is amoeba. The shape is irregular, and you can see, you can always draw the shape of amoeba in a very irregular pattern. These are the contractile vacuoles. This is a food vacuole. It has got a nucleus. It has got a digestive vacuole, which is rich in lysosome. And we will be studying today how amoeba takes food inside it. It, it says a holozoic mode of nutrition. It is also called this phagocytosis. So holozoic nutrition in amoeba. First of all, amoeba senses the food. As soon as it senses the food, the pseudopodia surrounds the food. You can see here how the pseudopodia will start increasing its size and will try to engulf the food inside it. The food is enclosed in a food vacuole. This food is now enclosed inside. It has got enzymes from the cytoplasm that are secreted into the food vacuole. So all the lysosomes over here, the enzyme will then enter into the food vacuole then digestion of food is done and the soluble materials are absorbed so whatever food is digested it will be absorbed and assimilated that is used up for energy the undigested food is then again the food vehicle will go to the its membrane part and it will expel the waste therefore the undigested waste is expelled Again, I will be reading the whole process of nutrition amoeba. It is called as phagocytosis. There are two processes that are called as chemotaxis and adherence. Chemotaxis means they move in response to chemical stimulation and adherence means they attach to the microbe. Ingestion. Ingestion is the process of taking in the food into the body, either by swallowing or absorbing it. Next step is digestion. The food taken in remains in the food vacuole or gastric vacuole formed by the cell membrane and small part of the cytoplasm. Several digestive enzymes react on the food present in the food vacuoles. Digestion is the process of breaking the insoluble and larger food molecules into soluble and minute molecules. Absorption. The food digested by the digestive enzyme is then absorbed in the cytoplasm by the process of diffusion. Assimilation. The absorbed food is used for the generation of energy. The excess amount is stored in the form of glycogen and lipids in the cytoplasm. Digestion. The undigested food in the food vacuole is passed out of the cell as the food vacuole fuses with the cell membrane and performs exocytosis. This is for your extra knowledge. What is the difference between excretion and ejection? Ejection. Ejection is the discharge of the expulsion of undigested material from the cell. In case of unicellular organisms and from the digestive tract why the anus in case of multicellular organisms. Excretion. Excretion is the process in, by which the metabolic waste is eliminated from an organism. In vertebrates, this is primarily carried out by the lungs, kidneys and skin. In mammals, urine is expelled through the urethra. So the difference between ejection and excretion. Ejection, the process involves removing the undigested waste product food from the body of the organism. Discharged materials are undigested food and other toxic substances left over from digestion. Ejection mainly happens through the anus or the mouth. Animals such as jellyfish use their mouth to both consume and discharge waste. Only animals undergo ejection. Excretion. The process involves removing waste from the cell of organisms. Discharged materials are metabolic waste such as carbon dioxide or oxygen. Excretion happens through the nose, skin, and urethra. Excretion happens in both plants and animals. Thank you all. Thank you so much. See you in the next session.